Today on Hack Tip, we're checking out wireless packet captures for WEP and WPA. This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Atlassian. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morse, and today we are checking out wireless packet captures in Wireshark. Now, this week we are going to expand our knowledge about wireless packet captures and discuss how to customize your options for a better wireless capture. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at some new columns in Wireshark. So I'm going to open up one of my Wireshark network analyzers over here. So before we move on to WEP and WPA and the differences, we're going to add some new columns to our Wireshark packet captures. So to do so, you simply need to go over to Edit and choose Preferences and go down to Columns. So that's going to be under Appearance. When you click on your different columns over here, you'll notice if you double click in the newest version of Wireshark, you'll get a nice little drop down. So you'll simply want to rename your new column to whatever you want. So for example, I have TX rate over here, and then I want to find the matching header type TX rate for the actual column specification. So I just added three new columns over here. I have RSSI, TX rate, and frequency and channel. So RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indication and shows the RF signal strength of a packet. TX rate is the transmission rate for the data in a packet and frequency and channel is obviously frequencies and channels. So these are all going to work for all your different wireless packet captures that you do. For each one, you just go to Edit, Preferences, and then Add them. There are also some special filters that you can use on a wireless capture. So if you check out the Wireshark website, links in the show notes of course, you will find several different resources for simple filters that you can use to capture specific data. So for example, if I scroll way down here to the bottom, you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of different display filters that I can use. So for example, if I just want to see 802.11 based traffic, I have WLAN. If I want to show from a specific MAC address, I can use WLAN.address equals equals, and then the MAC address, and so on and so forth. Look, I can hide beacon frames, but who wants to hide the bacon? After the break, I am going to show you the differences between WEP and WPA generated content in Wireshark, but first, let's take a break for our sponsor. From genome mapping to 3D printing to space exploration, or maybe just planning your next team off-site, behind every great human achievement there is a team. So the big question is how do you bring everybody together to build whatever is next? The solution is Atlassian. You can unleash your team's potential with Atlassian's collaboration software so you can work and you can communicate better together simultaneously. Yeah, you can match up. It actually works. You can assign, track, and manage different tasks for any kind of project no matter how complex they might be, and that's the clarity of Jira. You can create and you can share content. You can organize your results and bring team members up to speed with each other. Yay, because the flexibility of Confluence. You can also instant message or video chat with your team from any device with the freedom of HipChat, or you can test, review, and manage code, which is probably my favorite, in real time with the power of Bitbucket. Atlassian is helping teams in every single industry, from startups to enterprise, turn great ideas into reality. I use Bitbucket. I use it to share code snippets with the coworkers and then I get their feedback so it makes for a very, very handy way that I can make better segments for you guys while I am learning how to write code. You can go to Atlassian.com to learn more and see how Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. That's Atlassian.com. Unleash the potential of your team and build what's next. And we're back with some packet capture examples. I know this is the part that you guys are looking forward to, so let's go ahead and take a look at a WEP packet capture example. So you're going to see an authentication challenge under packet four, and this is a whole bunch of authentications and acknowledgements. If I drop down all the different options below the frames, you'll notice a status code of successful and a challenge text. So the challenge text shows you 16, the tag number. So if we move on in packet number six, the challenge is acknowledged with unencrypted data authenticating the user to the WAP. And if we look under data, you'll see the unencrypted data right below. Ha! Huh. Moving on in packet number eight, we'll see the status as successful. So let's scroll down and check that out. 
there you go, your status code is successful. Now, if your authentication fails, it's gonna look a little bit different, and I have an example of that one as well, so I'll pull that up. Here we will look at packet number eight, so the very last packet, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop down on these. If the authentication failed, it would look something like this packet capture. So under number eight, we see that we never received unencrypted data, but we ended up with a few errors. Now WPA is going to be a little bit different, and I have an example of those as well. So in this case, we're going to look at the very first one, the beacon. So this is a beacon frame. When we drop down to our tags, which is information found underneath 802.11, so IEEE 802.11 management frame, you'll notice that you get a bunch of information about the fact that it is WPA. If we look back up at the top at the different packets, you'll notice that authentication happens normally. You get a beacon frame, a probe request and response. There's a couple of authentications, an association request and an association response. And then we receive these key packets, which are transmitted. And there's four key packets. So this ends up being a four-way handshake. You have to have four different keys and you have to have the probe request and response and then the authentication. Once all of this happens, you end up with your data. So you get a bunch of data packets and your data is flowing smoothly. If there is a failure in your WPA authentication, it's going to look something like this. So you end up with your beacon frame, your probe request and response, your authentications, your association request and response, but then you get a whole bunch of keys. So instead of just having four keys transmitted, it tries one of four, two of four, then it tries one and two again, one and two, one and two, and eventually gives you a de-authentication because it once wasn't able to successfully add you to the network. So you would have several, several more key authentication attempts and a de-auth right after. Now, if you would like to delve into more of these packets, <laughs> even more than what I just described, you can always check out a ton of examples over at Chris Sanders' website, chrissanders.org slash captures, where he lists out a whole bunch of great examples, and he also has a book called Practical Packet Analysis that you should definitely check out. Now, if you are using a Windows 10 computer for Wireshark, here's a handy little tip that I discovered after a little bit of frustration. Yes, I have a Linux box as well, but I decided Windows 10 because it looks better whenever I scale it to my editing platform. So for this one, it gets a little janky with Wireshark. So here's a tip. Some builds of Windows 10 are not going to play nice with Wireshark because the necessary download called WinPCAP hasn't been updated for the new operating system. It's updated for eight, but not 10. So an open source version of WinPCAP has been introduced and you can download it over at win10pcap.org. So this should fix any kind of issues with getting Wireshark to recognize your network interfaces and hopefully you don't have any problems with that. Now let me know what you think, you can always send me a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org. Special big thanks to our new sponsor for helping us bring Hack Tip back and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack 5, for more great stuff just like this. And I will be there reminding you to trust your Technolust.